हेलो फ्रेंड्स वेलकम टू माय चैनल पैथोलॉजी मास्टर माय सेल्फ डॉक्टर पार्थ एंड टुडे आई एम गोइंग टू टीच यू वन टॉपिक फ्रॉम सेल इंजरी दैट इज द इटियोलॉजी ऑफ सेल इंजरी एंड द सेल्युलर रिस्पॉन्स टू द इंजरी सो वी विल डिस्कस हाउ पर्टिकुलर सेल इज गेटिंग डैमेज एंड द सेल्युलर रिस्पॉन्स टू द एनी फॉर्म ऑफ इंजरी स्टिम्यूलाई सो दैट इज अवर टूडेज टॉपिक ऑफ डिस्कशन so what are the learning objective for today's discussion so our learning objective is to understand the meaning of pathology what do you mean by pathology a student should understand the meaning of etiology and the pathogenesis as far as the particular disease is concerned the student should understand the etiology of cell injury in the detail so that is our main motive for the today's lecture so what do you mean by pathology here the word patho means disease and the logy means study if you combine both this word then the mean then the name will be pathology so in such way name has been arise it's a study of disease tissue that is known as pathology in the scientific word the robbins book says that it's about the understanding the cause of the disease what is the cause of the disease and changes in the cell tissue and the organs that are associated with the disease and give rise to presenting sign and symptom to the patient i will explain you this sentence in the figure form later on it is very easy to understand i will teach you that so what do you mean by etiology as far as particular disease is concerned suppose we are taking the example of atherosclerosis i am taking this example as a prototypic example to explain you so what is the etiology of atherosclerosis etiology means underlying cause or the modify factor that are responsible for the initiation and the progression of disease so suppose as far as etiology of atherosclerosis is concerned then the causative factors are the hypertension then your diabetes then high cholesterol level right then smoking so all that are etiological factors hyperhomocysteinemia so that is known as an etiology which initiate the disease and it will progress the disease right now what do you mean by pathogenesis so the pathogenesis means it's a mechanism of the development and the progression of disease it's related to the mechanism which accounts for the cellular and morphological changes that give rise to specific functional and the structural abnormality that characterize the specific disease that is atherosclerosis so as we have discussed the etiology for atherosclerosis is smoking diabetes hypertension hyperhomocysteinemia etc right if this so the mechanism by which these factors will cause the atherosclerosis i mean the mechanism by which atherosclerosis disease develop in the vessel is known as an pathogenesis right okay so literally we can say that etiology means why disease arise in the body it's related to why why you have such disease and the pathogenesis means how the disease develop in the body the pathogenesis is related to how how you develop the atherosclerosis in your vessel so that is pathogenesis right so this is a very beautiful figure from the uh, robbins right it's from the textbook of pathology of robbins 10th edition so here are the steps in the evaluation of the particular disease and here these four squares explaining you the whole definition of pathology as i have discussed that i will explain you the definition of pathology in the figure so here are the steps in the evolution of the disease so the definition of the pathology include the four four structural parts right it will start from the etiology the first step is etiology then there will be pathogenesis then there will be abnormalities in the cell i mean the findings morphological findings that is seen in the cells and finally you will have clinical manifestation so these four parts these four steps are related to the definition of pathology right 
so etiology means as we have discussed why the disease develop the first step is etiology why disease develop so etiology can be in the form of trauma in the form of uh, nutritional imbalance genetic mutations immunological abnormalities then infection then toxins biochemical changes right so all that can be related to the etiology the first step is etiology why disease develop then by the certain mechanism you will develop the disease means it's related to how disease develop so that is your pathogenesis mechanism of the disease okay now with a certain pathogenesis with a certain mechanism you will develop a disease as we have discussed because of diabetes hypertension you can have atherosclerosis right so what is the underlying pathogenesis so the underlying pathogenesis is the endothelial injury it's a cellular it's a chronic inflammatory response it's a atherosclerosis is a chronic inflammation in response to endothelial injury so that whole process of development through the chronic inflammation is the pathogenesis right now because of this mechanism you will develop atherosclerosis so the disease will manifest in a certain morphological abnormalities through certain mechanism you will de develop disease and there will be molecular functional as well as morphological changes in the cell and tissue in the atherosclerosis you will develop an atheromatous plaque you will develop an plaque what do we mean by plaque in the plaque you will have the inflammatory inflammatory cells particularly macrophage you will have the smooth muscles you will have the fibrotic tissue and you will have the liquid engulfed macrophage that is known as fomi cells right so such morphological changes is your third step it's a morphology right the development of atheromatous plaque that you will examine under the microscope it's your morphological finding there will be functional changes as well now because of this particular development of plaque you will have certain symptoms so fourth step is because of disease development you will develop clinical manifestation so you will have the sign and symptom of the particular disease so because of atherosclerosis your coronary artery can get block right your coronary artery can get block and you can have ischemic heart disease so you will manifest in the form of chest pain breathlessness so that is clinical manifestation right so these are the steps in the evolution of the disease okay now we will see cellular response to the particular injury until now we have discussed regarding the introduction of pathology what do you mean by pathology now i will teach you the cell response to the particular stress or the injury okay so your normal cell will not uh, do the any form of change right normally it's in a homeostasis form suppose you have the any form of injurious stimuli like that of less nutrition less blood supply right less nerve supply then what happen the cell will try to do the adaptation right the first step is the cellular adaptation the cell will try to adapt the situation so it will it will develop a new steady state right it will develop a new steady state to maintain the functionality and the viability of the cell it will try to maintain the function and the viability of the cell right it will do certain changes within it and that is known as cellular adaptation right your cellular atrophy means decrease in the size of cell increase in the size of cell that is hypertrophy hyperplasia means increased number of cells in a pregnant uterus so all that are form of cellular adaptation now if the adaptive capability of the cell is exceed then you will develop the injury suppose this injury stimuli is persist and cell now can no longer do the adaptation right adaptation capacity is over then your cell will injured and it is known as reversible cell injury the name itself suggest here you can prevent the cell death i mean up to this stage the progress is reversible but 
if the injury stimuli persist if it is progressive and if it is severe then now you can no longer survive the cell and the cell will undergo irreversible cell injury and once you develop the irreversible irreversible cell injury the cell will certainly die in the form of necrosis or apoptosis there are two process of the cell death necrosis and the apoptosis so this is the cellular response to the injury first it will do the adaptation remember guys this is the basic of cell injury the first cell will try to adapt the new situation it will do the cellular adaptation if the injury stimuli persists then it will undergo injury and that is known as reversible cell injury but suppose still the injury stimuli is not removed and the injury stimuli is persist or severe then the cell will undergo irreversible cell injury and once it enter into the irreversible cell injury the cell will certainly die in the form of necrosis or apoptosis okay so this is all about the cellular response to the injury and the introduction of pathology now we will learn our third objective that is the etiology of cell injury in the detail so if you have any form of cell injury starting from a very minor trauma to the third to the cancer the cell will injure because of eight cause universally there are eight cause for the cell injury that include hypoxia toxins infection immunological reaction genetic nutritional physical and aging we will discuss each cause in the detail so first cause is hypoxia and the ischemia the common cause this is it is the most common cause for the cell injury the common cause for the cell injury is the ischemia and this ischemia will lead to hypoxia so the common cause of less oxygen supply to the organ is the ischemia and ischemia as you know usually develop because of arterial occlusion as we have discussed it will develop because of atherosclerosis mainly so because of arterial occlusion commonly you will have ischemia and that will lead to hypoxia to the organ hypoxia means less oxygen supply to the organs okay sometime what happen the hypoxia can develop because your blood is no longer able to carry the oxygen effectively that is seen in carbon monoxide poisoning so that also can be the cause for hypoxia right so this was about the first cause okay now second toxins so there are certain toxin uh, that can lead to the cell injury right it can directly damage the cells so the examples are air pollution then insecticides then carbon monoxide poisoning then asbestos suppose you are working in the asbestos industry then this toxin can lead to cell injury smoking obviously the common cause of uh, cell injury it it commonly lead to endothelial damage and that is the main Uh, mechanism for the development of atherosclerosis it can damage your respiratory epithelium so you will have bronchitis right then alcohol then drug overdose the drug is very useful in treating the disease but if you are taking in a overdose then it can damage your cell excessive oxygen salt and water as well can be lethal to the cell so they can cause injury if they are taken excessively if oxygen is given excessively if water is given excessively then also it can act as a toxin okay now the next etiological factor is the infection obviously any form of infection will lead to inflammation and it will damage your capillary endothelium right it can damage your cell so which are the infections that can cause cell injury the virus is like that of uh, covid right corona virus then adenovirus right rota virus you might have heard the name of covid just now because the pandemic is going on so viral infection can cause cell injury then bacterial infection also can be responsible like that of uh, streptococci pneumonia right it will lead to pneumonia then uh, streptococcus viridans and group b streptococci particularly group a will lead to pharyngitis 
then fungal infection like that of histoplasmosis aspergillosis candida like then protozoal infection also can cause cell injury uh, the common example is malaria right and the hookworm so all these can cause uh, cell injury okay fourth one is uh, immunological reaction so as you heard that uh, immune system the main function of immune system is to fight against the pathological microbes but you might wonder that sometime body might respond against the self antigen it will react with our self cells self antigens and that is called as an autoimmune disease i have made the separate video for the mechanism of the autoimmune disease so you can see that video how autoimmune disease develop so it can cause cell injury right okay now next etiological factor is genetic factors certain genetic mutation can cause cell injury right suppose you have the mutation in the hemoglobin in the beta globin chain at the sixth position in which the valanin at getting replaced by lysine sorry here at the sixth position of the beta chain valine valine get replaced the glutamine right and that will lead to sickle cell anemia sometime uh, if you have the uh, mutation in the dna repair genes the one condition is ataxia telangiectasia right so in that your dna repair gene cannot work normally and it will cause dna damage so you are prone for the more cell injury and the cancer as well sometimes trisomy 21 will lead to down syndrome so that is also the example of cell injury by genetic factors right okay the another etiological factor is the nutritional imbalance that is the reason for the cell injury as well suppose your cell is not getting enough nutrition you have the protein energy malnutrition you have the vitamin deficiencies then it can lead to cell injury right only deficiency is not responsible for the cell injury remember guys the nutritional deficiency only is not responsible for cell injury if you have the high cholesterol level and you are obese then it can damage your capillary endothelium and will lead to development of atherosclerosis so over nutrition over cholesterol level obesity also can be responsible for the cell injury so we can say that nutritional imbalance also can be responsible for cell injury okay next etiology is the physical agents the name itself suggests physical agents means uh, if you have the burns thermal injury right trauma road accident electrical injury pressure imbalance all that can cause cell injury the final etiological factor is your advanced age that you cannot prevent it will lead to cellular senescence and will gradually lead to cell injury right the advanced age that is called as cellular that is aging so the cell also become old one right the with the advanced age you can have the cell injury we will discuss it in detail later on in the next video right my reference for the today's lecture is the robin's basic pathology 10th edition i have prepared this video from the latest edition of the robin's uh, thanks for your time and the attention guys so this is all about the introduction to the cell injury right this was uh, this was all about the etiology of the cell injury introduction to the pathology and the cellular response to the injury if you like my channel then subscribe if you like my video then subscribe my channel and press the bell icon so that you can get notified whenever i am posting the new video see you soon with the new video guys thank you very much